Man, Brian Azzarello has changed through the years. Definitely not for the better. Okay, Bizarro, we need to explain what the hell happened. Yeah? Uh, can we wait? No, now. We need to discuss this now. What was that? Fine. So, uh, remember when I told you I was a dream demon? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, when I became a dream demon, which that's a whole other story there, uh, they gave me a very special uh, task, which involved that book. They told me I could do whatever the hell I want with the book, since they knew I wouldn't do anything too dangerous. And, uh, the result being that thing. And that thing was... A very bad product. But what if that thing comes back? Oh, don't worry. We don't have to worry about it anymore. I used the book to, uh, make it where if it comes anywhere near us, it'll teleport us right back to, uh, the white space. Well, that's what I call it. It has many names. The White Room, The Crossroads, Limbo, Dream Space, Dreamscape. Honestly, that last one really could just be either or. Um, but, yeah. And that's it? Okay, I'm done, right? I'm, I, come on, let's, I, I kind of want to get into this and stuff. You know, for a minute there, I just want to remember that Brian Azzarello used to do good work. Like, I got so many more questions. Come on. You're not going to tell me anymore? Nope. <sighs> hey, everyone. How's it going? And though it took a while, we have finally come back to Black Sad. Now, of course, I'll give some backstory, but I'm going to be pretty brief. If you want a more detailed version of it, I would recommend checking out the first video that I'll put in the link in the description. The series was created by Spanish comic writer Juan Diaz Canales. Again, sorry, I kept mispronouncing his name. My bad with art regularly done by Wando Granindo. The series takes place in an anthropomorphic version of 1950s America and follows a life in investigations of a cat by the name of John Blackshead, who works mostly as a private investigator, though we do see him in some stories like this take other jobs for rent money. Though not a total smash hit at first, the series would slowly grow a cult following, with it even getting a video game in 2019 and a Kickstarter last year campaigning for it to get a tabletop RPG. But we're not here to talk about the game, we're here to talk about the comic, and of course, continue the theme of the last review. And no, unlike the last two, it has nothing to do with God. Sorry if anyone was hoping to see John Blacksad face off against Hechemon, the God of War. Despite the anthropomorphism, a lot of these stories are mostly grounded in reality. I said mostly. Anyway, I'm referring to the themes of, of course, mystery and trust, which is gonna be playing central stage here since much like how the last story, The Arctic Nation, was based around the very real racial issues of the 1950s, the story Red Soul dives into another real world issue of the time, that being the Cold War and McCarthyism. How well does Canales handle this subject? Well, let's get into the story. Warning spoilers. Now, if we recall a few minutes ago, I mentioned that despite the fact that John is is usually depicted as a private eye, he will occasionally take a series of odd jobs to pay the rent. In this case, a bodyguard and debt collector for a wealthy old man. It's mostly for his vacation in Vegas, and though John hasn't really enjoyed his time in Sin City, it's going pretty smoothly. After they return to New York, they visit an art gallery where they are met by Commissioner Smirnoff from the first story, now with his family. It's a pretty nice moment, but it's after they meet where the ball really gets rolling. John finds out that his old college professor is in town and is having a a lecture about nuclear energy. As I mentioned before, this particular story focuses on the Cold War, the height of the nuclear testing fear most people had of the devastation that it could cause, and the looming question if war between the US and the Soviet Union was inevitable. As for the aforementioned professor, an owl by the name of Otto Lieber is joined by Samuel Gottfield, a wealthy Dalmatian and associate who's pretty much helping the audience be open to the idea with his charisma, and who John easily could tell is an asshole. And last but not least, Lieber's friend and up-and-coming writer, a cat named Alma, who, when first meeting John, the two are busting each other's chops, pretty much. So you know they're gonna hook up. Otto is happy to see his old students, but their reunion is cut short by Godfield, who reminds the professor they're under a schedule, but also the protesters outside about the use of nuclear testing and the Red Menace. However, before leaving, he does invite John to come to a get-together the following day. While at the party, John narrates a bit about Otto and how he's part of a group 
of leftist intellectuals that called themselves the 12 apostles, who were based on actual communist groups of the time period, with members not being just professors and scientists, but also actors, poets, and artists. However, these men and women were openly pacifistic and were very open to how they were against how the Soviet Union corrupted their ideals. Near the end of the party, things get a bit heated as one of the apostles, an ape named Laszlo, has some choice words for Otto, particularly on how, despite being a pacifist, participated in the construction of the H-bomb. On a bitter note, the party ends and we quickly see that one of the apostles being followed home. A stalker in question is revealed to be an assassin and he quickly kills his target. John, of course, is hired to investigate the murder by Elma, all while Godfrey is under serious stress from both his friend's death, but also seeing the local news where a Senator Rooster by the name of Gallows has announced that he is finally cracking down and arresting any supporters of the Communist Party. Black Sad first talks to the close friend of the deceased, an old painter named Litvek, who believes that this was a political assassination and that the other apostles are next. Sometime after, Black Sad chooses to follow Otto and ends up stopping an assassination attempt on him, proving that there might be some truth in the theory. Will John be able to save his mentor? Is there something that Otto is hiding? And if so, what? And is it possible that John might be helping the wrong side? Like always, you're gonna have to read it to find out. Red Soul once again shows how much time and research Wano put in the story regarding the events of the Cold War and the witch hunts, along with how people were were impressed with the power of the nuclear bombs, with them even having parties where they'd watch bombs being tested in the Nevada desert as a form of entertainment, but also the paranoia that was created by the Red Scare and the people suspecting others of being communists and Russian spies. This is the last story of the volume, and it kind of makes sense, though both this and Arctic Nation have a high stakes, in fact the stakes are even higher here, the story hits John even more personally. Black Sad in here is trying to save a life of his friend and mentor, doing so, he forces himself to learn things that will make him question if what he's doing is right. And all while the same forces attacking Otto are now looking at him as a threat. However, despite that, I still find Arctic Nation as my favorite story of the series. Mostly because while Red Soul is a more personal story for Black Sad, since he has a lot to lose, it's also incredibly rushed once Black Sad saves Otto from the assassin. It's especially noticeable when you look at the character arcs, like Godfrey's mental state and all of Gallo's involvement in what was happening. In fact, when it comes to Gallows, despite being such a well-written bastard of a person and clearly inspired by James McCarthy, there's not much I can say about him as a character, so he's not going to be discussed much when we get to that category. The same can be said about Black Sad and Alma's romance. Again, I'll discuss it more when we get to the character category, but as much as I want to say it was a very powerful and very heartwarming moment in the story, it really isn't. It feels pretty rushed, and though it's well written, it's just not hitting me as hard as Canales was probably hoping for. Moving on to the characters, of course, we need to start with the talented character of John Blacksad, who from the start of the story isn't in a good place, financially and emotionally especially when seeing Smirnoff and his family. John is really wondering if he could ever have that life, or even if he deserves that life. He visits Otto because he hopes that maybe he could regain something, or at least capture some nostalgia by seeing a friendly face from his past, forgetting his troubles for a moment, or maybe just maybe gain something new and better out of it. These desires make it even more of a gut punch as Black Sad starts to learn more of the truth, and begins to be at great risk, but still pushes forward in hopes that at least there can be something that could work out for everybody. Next we got Alma, Black Sad's love interest, and I feel like was meant to be more than that, much like Godfrey who get to later. There's a feel that there was meant to be a bigger play with her character. She seems to be quick to the trick, and when it comes to what's going on, is able to give Black Sad some major clues, but in the most part, she's really just there to be the love interest and be his hope that he could get something better in life, which, as mentioned, is pretty rushed. I mean, it's not Ghostbusters, Displaced Aggression, Venkman, Rachel's levels of rushed. Still, it feels like we needed some more time to develop this romance. Without major spoilers, it is hinted that Alma may return, so maybe, if or when it happens, it can be, you know, an improvement to how her character is used there. Next, we got Samuel Gottfield, a character who I honestly wasn't expecting to have such a tragic arc. When first meeting him, kinda with Black Sad that he's just this smiling jack 
jackass with a carefree lifestyle. Though, as we get to the party, it is hinted that, and then confirmed after the murder, he uses as a mask to hide his true fear of nuclear war. And we begin to see him slip into a state of panic. You really start to pity him as it happens, but much like Alma and even more with Gallows, the story feels too short and should have seen more of his character as the story progresses. Finally, we got Professor Otto Lieber. Right from the beginning, we are shown to see him as a good, compassionate person who truly wants to better people's lives. And in truth, those are his intentions. However, as I mentioned already, it's not all black and white. Otto has sins in his past. And as the story goes, he realized that he cannot just ignore them. The same can be said on what he's doing now. He's a character whose arc, I will say, is the only one that doesn't feel rushed. And his dynamic with Black Sad is very interesting, especially almost a kind of familial connection. There are other characters, of course, like Smirnoff and his family fellow apostles like Litvek and Laszlo, and even Weekly makes a comeback near the end. However, though they are all well-written characters, and I'm happy we actually get to see more of Smirnoff's life by meeting his family, his wife Dorothy, and their two children, they are mostly there just to support Black Sad. Though I do think Laszlo should have gone more to do in the story along with Gallows, given how his story is very much connected to Otto in uh, some of the most unfortunate ways especially what he has to reveal to John. It's pretty compelling and you feel his betrayal and it just felt odd to me that he didn't get to be involved in the end. You'd think I'd run out of things to say when it comes to Granito's art, but my friends, you'd be wrong. Besides the stuff I've mentioned before, it never fails to amaze me with the art combining the cartoony styles with the gritty violence of reality. But the art in this story definitely makes us feel the sense of claustrophobia. As the story progresses, we see the characters feel closed in, both figuratively with Godfield's encounter with Gallows, or literally as we see John just walking through a crowd full of people in New York. Black Sad Red Soul is a great story, but just an okay conclusion to the volume as a whole. Its pacing has issues, but the story and the characters themselves are just fine. If you haven't been following Black Sad now, I still highly recommend it. Most of the stories are pretty easy to jump into, and if you love mystery, there will always be a guarantee that you'll enjoy the stories here, and it will always make your jaw drop in the best ways possible. Thanks for watching. As always, like, share, and subscribe. And next time, we're actually gonna be continuing Black Sad outside the first volume, when later volumes just had one story, starting with A Silent Hell. See you later. Hey. You ever know who you are? Of course I understand you. Music itself is a language, you know. No, no. I think I know your story. You had everything set up. You had a grand plan. Something... big. But things go wrong. Things always go wrong for us. But you don't need a threat, buddy. Because you just made a new friend. And with you here, I think we can come up with a story that's a little bit more satisfying. What do you say? Alright, let's get started. Oh, my name? Hmm. You know, I haven't really thought about that. You know, I don't think I was ever given a name. But, I think I know what it would be. You know, for the sake of a classic trope, you can call me...